he has never had a Michigan license, ever, and has never had a license in the other 49 states in Commonwealth. Well, okay, so the that people versus Corey Harris. It's Gap, it's Township. Okay. So maybe I don't understand something. This is a driving while license suspended? That is correct, Your Honor. That's with the charges, Your Honor, yes. No, I'm looking at yes. his record. He doesn't have a license. He's suspended and he's just driving. Township, that now infamous hearing was just last month. Tonight, 7 News Detroit reporter Kimberly Craig tells us Harris believes he's paying an unfair price for an honest mistake. They were supposed to have been lifted it two, two years ago, but they didn't. It's very embarrassing. And with the um, type of ties that I have with with um, the church and, and the community, it's, it's very embarrassing. It has literally been pure OD hell. I've been assaulted. I've been followed. I've been laughed at. I've been ridiculed. I have been disrespected. Corey Harris is planning to appear back in an Ann Arbor courtroom Wednesday with a new defense attorney, Dion Webster Cox. My client doesn't want to go out here breaking the law. Yeah, may it please this honorable court, Dion Webster Cox appearing on behalf of Mr. Harris. How are you, Your Honor? We will see. We're good. <laughs> We're good. Um, Mr. Brown, or somebody from the PD's office, because I did not get a substitution. I got an appearance. Oh, I've got a substitution, substitution right here. Signed off on it is all right. Then I don't need to address. I don't need Thank to you. address the public defender's motion to withdraw. I'll consider that withdrawn given the substitution. I do have an appearance, and I will sign off on the substitution. Thank you. Thank you. All right. What are we doing today? So, Your Honor, we were going to, there are several options that my client. Well, and I, I want you to know, counsel, that um, because of certain things, the court has a number of things I have to say. Okay. Because I have, because I think the record, given particularly some of Mr. Harris's comments, with reference to this court potentially acting what at least as I'm to understand is on um, what some may be, or is it, let's put it this way. People are saying, and quite frankly, your client has made the assertion that the Pittsfield Township, as well as this court was acting on some type of defective or faulty information, which I will tell you counsel, cause the court given what the court did to investigate what my ruling was. And I will tell you that that assertion is absolutely correct with reference to any faulty information that either came through to the Pittsfield Township Department of Public Safety or to this court ultimately at the May 15th hearing. And I think it needs to be stated, I've been asked for comments. I have refrained from comments as my normal practice is. This court with the pending case will speak on the record. And so I am going to make sure that the record is very, very clear as to what this court knows and what this court acted on on May 15th. And we can start with this. And my basis for doing it is because of what was said about what this whole process was and that an indication council, and I, I know council, you've been before me before. Absolutely. I know it is not coming from you, but you also know how I am. I do. And, and the thing is, is that if for whatever reason, the one time in my life I was wrong, I will say it and did. But when I'm not wrong, and when people are not to blame, then it also needs to be said. So I will try to get through this as quick as I possibly can. But I will tell you, first of all, with any reference to your client having had a license on that day and some indication or misunderstanding 
as to whether or not he had a license. Let me make it very clear, based upon what the courts looked at, he has never had a Michigan license, ever, and has never had a license in the other 49 states and commonwealths that form up this great union. He has never had a license. In point of fact, when they suspended his license, and what people don't understand, when they suspended his license in Saginaw, they don't suspend the license. They suspend the privilege to drive in the state. Hence, for example, if he had had a Kentucky license, he would be able to drive everywhere that Kentucky would allow him to drive. He just couldn't drive in Michigan because his privileges had been restricted. I know you know that, but that wasn't at all said. But it doesn't matter because he didn't have a license ever. There is also then, and you know, I will, when it is necessary, come to the defense of my sister courts, and I will come to the defense of Saginaw. They got a great chief judge. The chief judge answered the question. But I will tell you, that court and its friend of the court did nothing wrong. His license was, his driving privileges, better stated, were unsuspended in 2022. That required Mr. Harris to do something. He didn't do it. Therefore, the friend of the court was under no obligation to send anything to the Secretary of State. Now, I hated that I had to look at all of this, but when there's a question as to what I did, I'm going to look at everything to make sure that what I did was all in order. There's then an indication from that that because that wasn't sent, there was a direct attack on Michigan's Department of Secret uh, Secretary of State's office, saying that the Secretary of State was somehow at fault. Let me tell you something. Secretary of State did what they were supposed to do. And in point of fact, they did nothing because they hadn't gotten anything from the court because Mr. Harris had not paid the reinstatement. This week, or a latter part of last week, once he paid that, Saginaw friend of the court did what they should do, and they sent it. Immediately, based upon the information that I have, the Secretary of State did what they do every day. They took that suspension off of his driving record, and he was then unsuspended. And then your client did what he needed to do with reference to the Secretary of State and paid a read. Just a second, Mr. Mr. Schiller. I'll let I'm going to let everybody respond because thank I, you. I, I am I am not done yet. Okay. All right. You're covering a lot of the points for me. Thank you, Your Honor. And so that came down to that. So the information at the time that I had, that Pittsfield Department of Public Safety had, was all correct at the time of both Pittsfield stop, as well as the May 15th day. It was all correct. There was no error by anybody. It was a failure on the part of Mr. Harris to do certain things. Now, I grant you that sometimes that can be a complicated process, but it was certainly not anybody's fault that that didn't happen other than that wasn't paid. Now. Here's the other thing, and I'm and like maybe in church where I say I'm, I'm about finished now. But the other part of this is this stop was in October. Most of the cases that we've heard just in this last afternoon are driving while license suspended cases. That's part of my Wednesday afternoon. We go through great pains to try to get people their licenses back which is really how it should happen. Between October and, and because I don't live under a rock, I actually watch things. You look very nice on TV. Thank you. You're welcome. There was something that was sad that was very disturbing to me. And I'm just going to let you know because I believe in being fair with everybody. The question was asked, 
along the lines between October of 2023 and the point in time of the May 15th hearing, was there an attempt by Mr. Harris to correct his license? Here's the part that was disturbing for me, so that you know. Okay. Mr. Harris indicated that at some point he had been involved in some accident. And being involved into the accident that he was basically bedridden or at least housebound, he could not get to the Secretary of State. That was set up there. And I think I don't, I'm going to presume because I don't, my knowledge of counsel, defense counsel is, I know you don't misrepresent anything. Right. You never do. Right. That's not true. Okay. He purposely stated that he could not get to the Secretary of State which for the way we handle things in this court would have placed him in a whole different category. We would have tried to find a way Let's figure it out. And the reason I know that is because Mr. Harris, on December 28th of 2023, do you know where you were? December 28th, 23. 23rd. 2023. I know I was laid. I was laid up from from my accident. You were at the Secretary of State's office, and you were at the Secretary of State's office because you re you redid and got your new Michigan ID. I have the date. That's the date you did it. December twenty eighth, two thousand twenty three. It did. And so that you also know, and in all fairness to counsel, because I don't know if counsel knows this or not, the way I know that he's never had a license is because May 3rd, 1990, he's never, he, he was 19 at the time, May 3rd, 1999, he applied for his first Michigan ID. Counsel knows, so I do, you cannot have both. You either have an ID or you have a license. One of the two. He has religiously every year <laughs> um, gotten a new ID. And so he knows that he doesn't have a license. And quite frankly, I just wish he would have said that at the beginning. And all of this hoopla could have been just put all aside. And we all go through the process as we do with all of the people coming here to try to get him his license back. But his falsehoods, misstatements are not going to fare him well in this court. I'm done for now. I'm sure I will have something else to say. Whoever, whichever one of you would like to speak first, you may. I'll wait to go last. <laughs> yes, um, I spent yesterday at the Pittsfield Council Police Department with Officer Monastere for the traffic stop in this case. Um, I also noticed the December 28, 2023 date, and I, I know the significance of that, and the court just went through that in safety, and I thank you for that. Um, in addition, at the traffic stop, I would, when I was at the police department yesterday, we watched the body cam video. At least twice during this traffic stop, he acknowledged to the officer that he did not have a valid license. Quote, unquote, quote, actually, I don't have a valid license. Close quote. The question was, are you a valid driver? Quote, I am not. Close quote. So you know what this this is all all this hoopla and the circus atmosphere it is in my opinion is an affront to the justice system. I mean I've been a prosecutor for more than 30 years, and to see this kind of hoopla around a driving while license suspended case is ridiculous. And it wasn't caused by this court, it wasn't caused by the Pittsfield Township Police Department, 
was caused by the extra judicial statements made outside this courtroom. Thank you. Okay, so- Go ahead, counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Well, first thing I'd like to say is, very first thing is we're here and that we're, we, we all saw this video. We didn't, I wasn't in court. I wasn't even on YouTube watching the court today, right? I saw it because someone saw it and decided to make a, decided to post it. I can assure you that that was not Mr. I don't think he has the capacity to be able to post it like that on YouTube or, or Instagram. So that was not him. And it happened to take, take off and go viral. So he had no, what we saw was him saying what? I'm, he was driving, which he should not have been driving, right? We're not. We're told not to drive on Zoom while doing that. So that's how this came to bar, came came to the attention because the court. I saw you. He said, "I can't believe this. Is he driving?" And we all said that. Everyone who saw that video asked the same question, and that just it became the it became a joke. It became a complete joke. Now, with respect to why what we want to do, and I cannot say anything is with respect to what my client has said. But when we talk about the hoopla, my client didn't start the hoopla. Perhaps he's made some comments, but he didn't start the hoopla whatsoever. That was someone that was outside that was outside of his control as to how it went viral. He had no control over that, and that I'm going to stand on that. He did not. He did not send it out to Instagram. He didn't send it out to wherever. He didn't do that part. So, with respect to, did he have a? a I, I don't want to try this case today all right. at all. But what I want to do is focus on what's good. Now, what was good? That day in October, this officer here, that could have gone a whole other direction. And I'm so happy that you were so kind and courteous to my client. Thank you, officer. Thank you so much. Because it could have gone another direction. We are here right now. My client has a, a application, an appointment to go to the Secretary of State for his permit. He's working on that. I want to focus on how do we correct this and cure this? How do we go forward with this situation? Whatever, he was not under oath under any of the things that he said. So we're not talking about any type of perjury going on. Right. Very true, right? That's true. So with that being the case, let's move forward with this. He is here. I, what I'd like, this is what I'd like. Because- to, Let me just- Yes. I would like to move forward to yes. on this case. We handle these cases all the time. But I will tell you, as you know, having appeared before me, the one thing I don't like is when people don't take responsibility for what they've done. When they take responsibility for it, we will use whatever we can to try to get you to another spot because it doesn't behoove any of us for you to be in that spot. One other thing that I will say, when you say it wasn't started by him, oh, it certainly was. It certainly was when he made his first statement to WXYZ about blaming people for this happening. And he shouldn't have done it. Because when you look at the whole thing, the person that needed to be blamed, and we can go back to a very a lot of other points, but I'm not here to embarrass it, but the person that needed to be blamed is the person that he was staring at in the mirror. He didn't do what he should have done. And that's okay. The majority of people that come here on a license saying didn't do what they were supposed to do. That's like a given. They don't go about blaming anybody. They just say, Your Honor, I didn't pay the ticket. Or, Your Honor, I just didn't do it. I just didn't have the time to do it. I just didn't take whatever. Right. Just own it. Once you own it, then it becomes a whole lot easier just to move forward. Okay, I'm sorry. I interrupted you and I said I wouldn't, but Thank my, you. I understand. my court. I, <laughs> no, I no, I know who you are and I respect that. So and, and where I am is where I've always been because I can assure you that when he did speak to WXYZ, that day, he, I wasn't representing him. I, re, I was representing him yesterday, right? And what did, and you would hear, heard my message is that what steps are to correct this? And that's what I'm about, Your Honor. How do we correct this, right? I understand the entire process. I have not gone into detail, but I will take the word of the court 
and of Mr. Stiller here, Brother Council, and about the background and the, and the history of it. But how do we go forward? And that's why, and that's why I'm here to sort of minimize. You okay? And he, he, he did get into an action. Maybe sit down. down. Yes, maybe down. please, Your Honor. Right behind. Oh, hold on. Okay. And now that's real. That's a real injury. I, I have no comment. Okay. So what we're looking for, because there are some options here, my client has indicated to me and would like me to indicate to the court that he is in the process of procuring his license. Oh, hopefully that privilege will be available to him, but he does have, as you stated earlier, and I have the receipts, he did pay the reinstatement fee. Those fees are paid. Anything that was out in the previous court, those fees have been paid and I've been presented with those receipts. In addition, on tomorrow, he's got his permit test coming up. And then after that, because he's an adult, he's working on it so that he can take advantage of the offers that are available. Because as you say, this court does want to help. Absolutely. And with that, because my client was in an accident and, and I haven't seen the medical records, but because of some of the things it could be, we don't, I don't know. But sometimes our memories gets a little, get a little foggy. Now, am I going back to 1999? No, I'm not. But I'm just saying that I don't want, I'm saying from this day forward, he is working diligently to take the steps necessary to get his driver's license so he can take advantage of the generous offer. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, yes, Mr. I to say, John, one additional thing. I think Fletcher Cox and I need to approach the bench. It may involve Mr. Allen. Who's Mr. I Allen? know because I know what it is. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, well, who's Mr. Allen? That's my bailiff. Oh. Um, I, I will give out whatever date I can. Okay. Counsel, you probably didn't know this, and I wasn't sure where the prosecutor was going to bring. He's got a warrant. For, no, I did not know. Yes, he has a warrant for his arrest. Uh, a bench warrant out of Allen Park. Allen Park. Mr. Allen. 24th District Court. Okay. The shocking thing about it is for a driving while license suspended that he didn't take care of. Okay. Well, like I said, he, so, he wants to handle. So what dedicated. it is, is that, and it's a valid warrant. I happen to be within their radius of pickup. Now, having said that, I don't know if they will pick him up. Okay. I will say that when he... What should have happened, I'm not going to go through and try to figure out whether it did happen, but when he was arrested, when he turned himself in on my revocation of bond, upon being released, he should have been apprised, warned and released to go take care of it. I don't know whether he was. I really don't care whether he was or not. All I know is that was back at mid-May, and it hasn't been taken care of. And it's still valid. I was hoping, maybe, that somebody was going to try and take care of it because I'm sure if you had known, they would have been done. So much so that part of my delay in getting out of here was to make sure that it was valid. I had my staff run him right before I came out so that if it hadn't gotten taken care of and in, then fine, we were okay. And I didn't need to deal with it. Right. But it's still there. Okay. So will July 17th work as a new date for you to come back? Because as I understand it, he is right now not licensed. So if he goes in on Thursday, gets his permit, he's got to drive for at least 30 days. Apparently he knows how to do that part. Sorry, that was, that was I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't need to say that. But 
we can. He knows how to do that part, but then he's got to go back, take the test. Right. And then he can do that. He may be able to accomplish it in that time, that 45 day period. If not, I mean, counsel, I'll, I just want him to have a license. We, we all want the same thing. One, one moment. So the 17th, it may not be me. It would be another attorney from my office. Who can well, I don't want that. Try. I don't want that. You, you want me? Yeah. Okay. I know. You'll never hear me say that. <laughs> <laughs> but <Okay. laughs> but right. I don't want to go through this whole, you you understand it. Right. No, I get it. So I started trial on the 15th. And, uh, sir, What's my date after the 17th? August 7th. What about August 7th? We can just put it out and then he can do what he's going to do or not do what he's going to do, but he should be able to. August 7th at one o'clock or would it be a nine? Eight? It will. I will set it at nine. We will send it in right now that we have your appearance. So you'll get a direct invite from us as to what time o'clock he's. Okay. And then I just need one moment to talk to my client. He yes. won't tell me something. Okay. August 7th at 9 a.m.? At 9 a.m. I'm going to take him into custody on the warrant. The only question that I have, and, and the way I look at the warrant, it, the bond is, looks like $500. Okay. Two things. First, I don't know whether or not they'll come get him. Right. If they don't come and get him, we'll, we'll release him. We're not going to hold him. Um, if they are coming to get him and he's going to be held. The only question I would have for you, counsel, is do you want me to set a nominal bond on this so that he gets credit or do nothing and not worry about it? It's, it no. I'll leave that up to you. Okay, that will be, but absolutely, I want him to be able to get full credit for anything that is necessary. So um, let's do it this way. If he's not, so I'm going to take him in. If for whatever reason, he's not released tomorrow, call my office and with the agreement, of, I will set a nominal bond okay. on it rather than do it right now. So he has to deal with two things. So that you're also clear. Part of the reason I'm also doing this is because I think he was warned and released, didn't take care of it. And secondly, this has been out there for nine years. Well, I did not know about it, Your Honor. I, okay. Counsel, there is not a doubt in my mind that that's true. You, I, I, no, you did not. I, 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 I go to the bank on that one in a minute because I know you want to take care of it. Yes. All right. It's going to be taken care of today. His All wife right. is here and okay. it will be taken care of. So I will absolutely okay. call your office tomorrow to see what is call the court to see the status of it. Ooh, yeah. We're going to take care of this. All right. Okay. That's Very what we're going to do. We'll see you in August. Okay. Defendant is remanded on the Allen Park. Sir, you can go with my baby. So at this point is bond will continue. Thank you.